Once every four years, we get an opportunity to trade an event that is widely covered around the world. And now we're looking ahead to the Football World Cup in Qatar. And we're joined now by former professional footballer and uh, technical analyst from tradingcollege.co.uk. It's Lee Sanford, a regular guest for us here at IG. It's a pleasure to talk to you. And when we put this together, um, I wasn't too sure of the statistics, but you've come up with some amazing stats to show this is going to be, what, the most expensive World Cup ever? Ever, yes. They're talking about £200 billion for this World Cup. Previous World Cup in Russia was around £12 billion. Uh, the one in Brazil before that, pretty much the same, at £11 billion uh, to get this thing off the ground. It's incredible. So it's going to be the most expensive World Cup. It's going to be a very interesting one as well. Well, talking about the interest side of it, let's let, we'll, we'll get onto charts in just a minute and how to, how to trade this and some of the interesting charts to watch out for. Let's talk a little bit about um, our interest in it as, as Brits, as English. Uh, and of course, Welsh as well, because we've got two home teams mm. through to the uh, the finals in Qatar, um, England and Wales. What are the chances? Um, I think it's. I think England's got a chance. We have got a chance. We've got some great players. Um, I think uh, you know. You, I live. I live by thinking that one day in my lifetime, England are going to win the World Cup, um, and I think they got. A, Great chance. I just don't think in Qatar, I don't think we're gelling at the moment as a team. Um, but sometimes pre-World Cup, if you're not playing that well, you sometimes go into the World Cup actually performing much better. We've seen that from teams over the years. So I think we've got a chance. We have got a chance. We've got some great players. I just think at the moment we're not gelling well enough. Uh, but hopefully uh, Gareth Southgate, before the actual World Cup um, well, when it arrives, that we're actually uh, all on song. As a professional footballer, you would know better than most how difficult it might be necessary to acclimatise. I don't know whether you ever played in the in the Middle East, but I guess this is a very different sort of environment in which to play football than what we'd get in yes. the in the Western Northern Hemisphere. Exactly, and if you see the the, the stats over the years, it, European uh, countries haven't won. You know, when they're going over to the Americas or playing in World Cups in Brazil uh, and in the US. Um, So the stats are not great for that. And that's why I think um, when we get down to who we think is going to win uh, the World Cup, we're not going to go for a European country. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a difficult one to acclimatise. I mean, the reason they've moved it from uh, the summer um, into, into the, the winter months here in Europe is because of the, the weather. Mm. It, it's, a, it's an absolute nightmare. As a football player, as a sportsman, mm. you don't want to be playing in those sort of conditions. Mm. And of course, it takes us out of what is our normal um, seasonal Mm. The, the, the season, the football season, it takes a lot of players out from the Premiership, from uh, various divisions to, yeah. to go to Qatar. It could be a positive, though, because, you know, they've only been playing up to November. So August, the season starts into November. Uh, they haven't played a whole season mm. where a normal World Cup said they played a whole season, maybe fatigued, tired, yeah. coming to a World Cup, uh, another six weeks away from the family. But... But this, yeah, this could be something different. I don't know. England needs something different to win a World Cup. We always play our World Cups in the summer months and we've not done so great. You know, we've mm. not got the, uh, the, the results we want in the World Cups. But uh, maybe something different might change the whole pattern. For those waving the flag of the Welsh Dragon, <laughs> um, chances? Great, yeah. I think, I think um, I, I don't think they'll win it, but I think they will go. Um, got every chance of qualifying from the group. Yeah. Um, you know, we're playing the Iran. We've got they've got uh, the US and they've got England, of course. But I think their spirit, you know, mm. just their spirit, the whole nation, mm. the Welsh nation, could you know lift them and their spirit of uh, their players could could take them into the next round. Well, let's let's look at, the, at more in detail at that group: England versus Iran. To start us off with, on that group, Group B, mm. uh, I'll talk about the big favourites in just a minute. But that that group, um, and then Wales against the US. What chances the US and Wales um, graduating through to the yeah, next round? It's it's all about England going to win that group, I think, and then you know it's all about Wales and the US. So I think you know the spirit of the the Welsh, as I said, I think got good chance. US are not a bad side. Um, yeah. So I think it's, a, it's amongst those two. Um, whoever gets the upper hand, obviously, is going to get through to the next group. But I think Wales, after that, uh, when we get into that last 16 group, maybe if they get through this group, may 
struggle a little bit um, in the next in the next rounds. Yeah, um, of course he doesn't kick off with that. My understanding kicks off with it was the Qatar game, isn't it? Because the yeah. the hosts play. I think it's Ecuador, Equ Ecuador yeah. isn't it? Um, let's look at the the, the big hitters, uh, the top five that expected to win. Mm. Who's in the very top in your book? All the big players. Um, you've got the likes of France, who won it last time. Yeah. So, you know, they're going to be strong again. Um, you've got the likes of Germany that always do well in competitions. I don't know what it is with Germans. They always get up for the big tournaments, yeah. tend to do very, very well in dealing. Organised. Organised, <laughs> very well structured team, you know, very well disciplined side. Um, I'm sure we'll come against up against them, I suppose, <laughs> with uh, some penalties along the way. That would be an absolute nightmare. Um, but, um, you know, we've got the, the likes of Portugal and then we've got the big guns like, you know, Brazil, Argentina, which are looking really, really strong, especially Argentina. Yeah. Um, is that your favourite or are you going with Brazil? Brazil, I understand, is the tournament favourite amongst the bookies at the moment. Yeah, I think it's just moving from Argentina and Brazil. So I think uh, for me personally, um, I'm going to go for Argentina because I think they're on form at the moment, doing well. And because it's in Qatar as well, I think the climate... I think it would just suit them better, I think, with all the European yeah. Um, country. Yeah. So what we agreed to do is we, we agreed to meet two or three times over the World War, um, certainly ahead and, and during the World Cup, uh, and discuss this. And I know that we were going to focus in on Group B to begin with, and then we'll work out how the home teams are going to do. So let's move away now from the teams and take a look at how we trade this in terms of some of the companies associated with this. You said 200 billion, yeah. is that sterling or is that dollars? I mean, it's a lot of money, whichever way you cut it. Okay, so we've got a lot of companies involved in this, a lot of money involved in this. A lot of people want to be seen to be making a profit. Whether or not they will ultimately yeah. remains to be seen. Um, what's your pick amongst the charts to watch out for? Okay, so we're looking at the sponsors here and we've got the, the good old traditional sponsors like Adidas, Coca-Cola, uh, McDonald's are in there. So we're looking at Adidas share price right here and it's been it's been hammered, isn't it? I mean, it's it's been it's in a massive downtrend. On Friday, we had a little tick up, though. Yeah, there was a there was a bit of news out, the fundamental news that took us into a positive trading day. In fact, it was up over twenty percent actually. Yeah. Just to show how much it's been beaten up is twenty percent. Just makes that little candle. Um, new chief yeah. executive on board, which I think is going to be good news. It's coming through from Puma, so the Excellent. chief executive with a good reputation within the business. And and you know this is not a trading strategy here. We're not saying that the World Cup is going to move the share price of any of these sponsors in yeah. particular, because some of the charts that we've looked at, Jeremy, are not so pretty at all. Um, but but if you just look at Adidas, a little bit of a positive announcement on Friday, going into the World Cup, they're going to get a lot of exposure. You know, I think the stop placement on this, the risk is underneath 89.80 here, mm -hmm. which is the low here, which is uh, 89 euros. And I think, you know, a bit of a round number here, 100 euros. Could we push back up to this resistance area around 151 up here, maybe 150, which is a big round number, which psychologically is something that traders love to attack and get uh, attracted to. So I don't know. I mean, this for me, I know where I'm wrong. It's in a massive downtrend. Mm. Um, if we have to go long, this one has got a decent risk reward here. And you put a stop loss fairly close in, presumably underneath the yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, if you spread bet in this, I think you've got to go tighter. But from a technical point of view, it's underneath that low of uh, the hundred. And of course, Adidas is one of these um, companies so closely aligned with with football, being a shirt sponsor, being a you know a shirt provider, and so forth, and and having such a real central interest in it. How about some of the peripheral businesses? I'm thinking about some of the. The, 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 the brewing companies, the, 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 the companies that provide food and so forth. And these companies are part of the big sponsorship deals, aren't they, as well? Yeah, they're, they're the main sponsors. If you look at Coca-Cola and McDonald's, let's look at, um, let's look at uh, Coca-Cola um, right here. Uh, in fact, shall we look here? Yeah, we look at Coca-Cola, shall we? Let's go and dive into that chart. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the food and beverage here, and uh, you look at KO Coca-Cola, and it's, it's just there is... This is in a major downtrend, isn't it? I mean, we made a high of $66, $67, and we've made lower highs, and we're making another lower high here mm. into resistance as well. I cannot get long this at all. It looks like it's making a lower high, which it is, and we could roll back over to 54. Could we get a bit of sentiment with the World Cup? Maybe, but it's got to start breaking above this $61 area here. Which would take us above the 200-day moving average, which is something else which is going to cause a bit of headwind, presumably, that red line. Absolutely. Then it could attack the highs, and then we'll have a triple top here. So I'm not, I'm not 
keen yeah. on this market whatsoever. But let's take a little look at uh, McDonald's as well. I mean, McDonald's is a different chart completely. We're sort of making, looks like we're nearly making new highs. Yeah. All time record. All time high. record highs. It's 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 really good. I think moving averages are underneath the price, so average price is moving up here. The MACD line is you know, a little bit extended, but it's it's bullish. It's above the zero line, so those moving averages are going to come and um, uh, welcome the price. So that could provide support. Um, and McDonald's a big sponsor, huge sponsor for the World Cup, and so we could see this is the bullish, the most bullish chart that we've seen. Mm. It's interesting, isn't it? The backdrop to all this is, is that uh, economies around the world are under enormous amounts of strain. Um, consumers, everybody's feeling higher interest rates. Mm. Those that have mortgages have got enormous mortgage repayments. Um, we are normally, you'd see a sporting event like this, one in the summer, which gets people out and gets people into party mode and gets people buying stuff from supermarkets and so forth, um, or going to the pub. Uh, it's a completely different, almost an unknown quantity, isn't it, about what's happening um, because of the problems. And as you said, I mean, it's this enormous amount of money these companies are spending in order to get to the World Cup to provide uh, whatever it is they're, they're providing. It's going to be such an interesting thing to work out who's going to make money out of this, if anybody does. But, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely spot on. It's November, December, before Christmas. Everyone's going to be spending anyway for Christmas. Assuming and they can. Assuming they can, exactly. <laughs> they can afford it. But, you know, do you want to go to the pub in November to watch the World Cup on a Monday, uh, one pm to watch the first game, England versus um, uh, Iran? Do you want to be? Do you want to be doing that? I, I, you know, I think, I think a lot, what will happen, I think, for us fans is that yes, we do normally go to the pub in the summer. It's great because we can get the screens up and all the all the fans can be chanting. We can, you know, do the usual footballs coming home and all that songs, and that'd be great. But this time, you know. Do you really fancy going in the cold down to the pub yeah. uh, and watching it? And it is in work time as well. So will, will, will the companies will companies let their staff take the time off to, to watch some of these? Mm. What I think will happen is we will start going to the pub. I think you'll see the consumer go to the pub when we get through to after yeah, the, the group right. stages, maybe the quarterfinals and things, the bigger, uh, you know, the knockout stages that we'll start and we'll end up going to, to the pubs and then they might see a little tick up on revenue, which would be quite nice for the breweries um, before the big Christmas um, uh, liftoff, really. Mm. Lee, we'll have to leave it there, but thanks indeed for joining us. We'll be back uh, with Lee Sanford from tradingcollege.co.uk. Throughout the World Cup, we'll be taking a look at what's happening in Group B and if and when either of our two home teams that get through uh, to the final stages of the World Cup. We'll be back talking about what's happening, what the odds are, and whether or not there's much hope for the home teams against some of the bigger players uh, within the World Cup. That was Lee Sandford from tradingcollege.co.uk. If you want to find out more from Lee, join him on his website.